Boy Promotions is bringing the club scene to the Southern California crowd, and they get to see the star of tomorrow, tonight on Rick TV Live. Friday night, the downtown LA skyline. You see Staples Center to the left, LA Live, and there's a lot of construction. They're building a lot of things in downtown LA, and Golden Boy Promotions is building their next star, and some of them are coming out of the Belasco Theater, the home of the LA Fight Club, a place where fighters can go, sell some tickets, see their friends, make a name for themselves, and graduate to the next level. That's where they want to get. They want to get to the pay-per-view status. We're going to see five good fights coming your way tonight from the sold-out Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Alongside Doug Fisher and Holly Lawson, I'm Bethel Duran. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the LA Fight Club on Ring TV Live. Make sure you use the hashtag Ring TV Live. And we will check out your tweets throughout the night. You know you love your shout-outs. Of course you love those shout-outs coming your way. We appreciate your support. A lot of good things coming for you. And our main event tonight is going to feature Vyacheslav Shabransky, Doug. Undefeated Slava Shabransky has quickly made a name for himself from yeah, the Ukraine. He did it all last year. He began 2015 as a complete unknown. Earned his stripes as a prospect. At one point was considered a suspe suspect when he suffered two knockdowns against uh, Paul Parker. But into the year, beating Uneski Gonzalez and earning a legitimate top 10 contender status within the light heavyweight division. These are scenes from his last fight against Derek Findlay where he showed he could do more than punch. He has good boxing technique and ring generalship, but his power is his bread and butter. And he got rid of the, the veteran gatekeeper with body shots. And that is our main event, Vyacheslav Shabransky from the Ukraine against Oscar Riojas from Mexico. Five fights on the docket tonight. And there you see him, our opening bout, making his way from Santa Monica, California. David Junebug Mihadas, he's 20 years old, Holly. 20, he's so young. Third fight, I think this is his first fight in front of a hometown crowd, right? Yeah, it is his first time in Los Angeles that he's fighting. He's fought in Las Vegas. He fought on the Canelo card. He's also fought in Utah. He is billing tonight as the homecoming. Because you're right, it is his first fight in he Southern California. He definitely has a lot of people here to see him. The whole upper deck is filled with t-shirts for his team. What goes through a young fighter's mind when he's fighting in front of his, his family and his friends and his gym mates for the first time as a pro? You know, that's... It's a lot of pressure. You want to do good. You definitely want to show out a little bit in front of your crowd. It's the first time you've had a chance to kind of show what you're all about as a professional. I expect kind of a big performance out of him this evening, probably. He says he wants to, to make a statement, and he wants to show people that he is making that transition from his amateur style to a more settled-down, power-punching professional style. I look forward to seeing him do that. Um, I'm sure that his fans are here to you know, see some big action. So let's see what he has. Our ring announcer tonight, the one and only, the professional, Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Belasco Theater here in Los Angeles, California for an exciting night of professional boxing, all brought to you tonight by Oscar De La Golden Boy Promotions. And we're set to go with our first bout this evening, four rounds of boxing, this in the super lightweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed in officially 136 and one quarter pounds. In his second professional bout tonight, he looks for victory number one from Hobbs, New Mexico. Here is Jorah, the Mentis Spanbar. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing silver, trimmed in black, he weighed in officially 139 pounds. In two professional bouts, he stands perfect with two victories, no defeats, one win by way of knockout from Santa Monica, California. Here is the undefeated David Jumbo Mihadis. And your referee in charge of the action, Dr. Lou Moret. Come on. Come on. Okay, gentlemen, again, let's watch him wrestling. Let's have a good, clean fight. Listen to my command. Touch brothers, return to your corner, and wait the bell. Good luck. Dr. Lou Moret in the ring. He has a PhD, college professor, with one part 
the Democratic National Convention was running the Hispanic Caucus for them in the 80s. He's in the ring tonight. And here's the tale of the tape for Mijares and Sparenberg. Mijares is four years younger at age 20, but Sparenberg has Mijares. the height and reach advantage. At five foot 10, he's three and a half inches taller. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and Holly Lawson getting ready to go. Our opening bout from the Belasco Theater. The LA Fight Club is underway. David Junebug Mijares, the southpaw with the white gloves, is taking on 24-year-old Jarrell Sparenberg in the black trunks from Hobbs, New Mexico. Junebug, a good amateur out of Southern California, went to Santa Monica High School. Father known around the Southern California boxing scene in the training world. For a comparison, Jarrell Sparenberg in New Mexico was more of an MMA fighter. Has a couple of MMA pro fights. This is his second fight ever. And when I say ever, as in he had no amateur fights at all. It kind of shows in his body language, the way he lets his hands go. He has to think about everything he does. And he's kind of awkward, which I, I think you would expect from somebody who has a background whose foundation in combat sports is, is coming from MMA. Right, it's MMA and not boxing. He definitely is keeping his hands really high there. Not not wanting to exchange that much. Mihara is showing really nice kind of, I don't know, he's showing nice movement. He's very being very patient, which is cool. Not coming forward too quickly. Has a big crowd, lands a big left. Mihara has over 80 people in attendance tonight. Wearing a shirt that says Junebug. Junebug, a southern reference to Junior. Man, He's David grade. Charles Mihadis. Nice there hook. There you go. There you go. Mihadis was a very active and mobile boxer in the amateurs as a professional fighter. Be, be smart. Let's go. He's trying there you to go. There you go. settle down on his feet there. a little bit more and, and take the fight more to his Hands opponents than he did in the amateurs. He's definitely a little bit high up on his toes, but it looks like he's sitting down when he wants to actually throw a punch, which is what it's all about, right? Mihara is looking good in the opening round. The delight like of Julian Free Camaron round. Ramirez, who's watching on Ring TV Live. El Camaron works out with Mihadis. Sheer sports and stable mate. Pressure from June Bug. Your sports have a nice little team Double there, down. actually. Working Ooh, the good body. body shot. Mihad is trained by his father, David way. Sr. Oh, stiff left from Mihad is the 20 year old Southpaw. Just having his way with Sparenberg here in the opening round. There it's scheduled go. for four. Oh, right there. He's still an active fighter. He's just not moving around the ring as much as he did as an amateur. He's not letting his hands go for three minutes of a round. <laughs> um, but he's still moving a lot. He's got good footwork and trying to close the distance. And when his hands aren't moving, his head and upper body are moving. Absolutely. I like that a lot. He cuts good angles. He definitely keeps his head off the line. For a southpaw, he, he has good um, movement to the left as well, which is interesting. It isn't always the case. You know, southpaws usually move a little more smoothly to the right, so it's nice to see when somebody has the lateral movement to the left as well. But again, that would be that good footwork coming from the amateurs. First round in the books, David Mihad is sat down with our Ring TV Live cameras. His game plan is to stay busy, three or four fights every year. We, that's the least, you know, we're just trying to get as much work in as we can, stay sharp and never get dull. Yeah, at the gym, now we're working on uh, sitting down on our shots. Uh, we're still keeping our movement, um, sitting down on the shots, and really just working in and getting, working towards getting the guy out of the ring. Uh, I'm looking again to put on a beautiful, wonderful show for the fans. Um, I know my opponent's going to be looking for his first win, so I know he's going to be ready. But I'll just be, I'll be right there with him. And he's going to be ready for me. I'm expecting a huge fan fan base to come out. Uh, wonderful night, and just ready to have fun. 20-year-old David Mihadis from Santa Monica with the Santa Monica High School. Mihadis, good-looking kid who's been in an ad for Adidas, H&M, been in an AT&T documentary, so he has that show both way. He has a Hollywood lifestyle behind him, but he said he's all about boxing. He really started taking it serious when he graduated high school, and he just turned it up a different notch. Around the age of 13, as an amateur, started going to some of the bigger tournaments. He was about it. Uppercut landed by Mihadis. He's go. got the white gloves. Sparenberg from Hobbs, New Mexico. That's a small town in southeast 
New hey, Mexico. He's bleeding from the left eye. Hobbs High Eagle, that's where he was a wrestler. Has a Greco-Roman hey, no, background keep also. Keep going. He said he likes boxing because the checks are bigger. Well, you know what? I think the punches are also heavier. Body work from Mijares. Mijares is doing better when he is a little more patient, stays on the outside. Jab, jab. He doesn't get so excited and kind of fall in. He's getting tagged a couple of times by Spanish. Right right just when he's so close. It's kind of battling his own enthusiasm. Yeah, you can tell he's holding himself back, and he's actually doing a really good job of that. You know he wants to be here and just showing out for everyone. Oh, oh good left. From good left. Body work for Mijares. New Mexico fighter just holding on right now. Mijares actually spars at the wild card gym. Doesn't get to him work. And he's just tagging off on the New Mexico fighter right now. Dr. Lumeret is looking at it and he's jumped in. It is over. A second round stoppage for David Junebug Mijares. He said it was the homecoming. Wanted to put on a show for his hometown fans. And the fighter from Santa Monica stops it here in the second round. He's now 3 0. Mahar is getting under some of those punches from Hobbs. Lands a nice one two combinations. It's the straight lefts that really did the, the majority of damage, Holly. Definitely. He cut the angle coming into the corner as well, so he could, you know, come from a different side, which was showing a little bit of that. I don't know, professional patience yeah. again. And, he, and he, he does a good job of that. And he's backing Hobbs into the neutral corner. Not loading up too much with these punches. He's still no. dealing still dealing at volume as opposed to the, the you know, maximum he's pretty relaxed. leverage. Right, right. He really is pretty relaxed there. Definitely moved his head enough a lot. Stayed out of the way of most of his punches. That's what I like. The last time he fought, he scored a, a third round stoppage, but he fought with a bloody nose oh, throughout that contest right. because he got clipped a few times in the opening round. Well, it looks like he probably learned from that fight and out here and did what he needed to do. And there you see his father in his corner, David Mihadis, and his father, also named David. David Charles is the fighter, David Paul is the father. <laughs> that is correct. Father-son combinations in boxing. They're always either really, really good or pretty tenuous. And Joe Martinez <laughs> is ready, our ring announcer for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the official time, one minute, 36 seconds. Round number two, Dr. Lou Moret puts a halt to this bout. We have your winner by KO victory. He is still undefeated, David Junebug Mihari. David Mihadis, 20-year-old Santa Monica High Viking, was more of a music. He was in the band in high school. Had a great background behind it. His dad was a celebrity trainer. And he knows a lot of people in Southern California. He brought over 80 people with him, looking up at the crowd. And there you see him. The Junebug fans got their money's worth as they see their fighter with a second round stoppage. He's now three and oh. We'll be back with more. An interview with Mijares and also leading towards Chopransky and Riojas. You're watching the LA Fight Club on Ring TV Live. Back at the Belasco Theater, the home for the LA Fight Club. A jam-packed crowd is here. Over 80 tickets were sold by the one and only David Mijares, who joins us right now. You called it the homecoming. Your first time fighting in Southern California as a professional. You've done Vegas, done Utah. Second round stoppage at the Belasco. How cool was that? Man, it's, it's amazing. I, 
I just feel so so grateful for you know everyone who came out and everyone who was able to watch and I just feel you know it's just a part of the job and, and I got to keep keep going keep giving a beautiful performance to people. It's a little more satisfying fighting in front of your friends and your family though. Oh yeah, a little bit absolutely. extra special there. You, you feel the energy and you just feel everyone you know rooting for you and. Uh, it really is something special. There's nothing like it. You fought a fighter who was in his second fight of his career. You came out really aggressive. Was that the plan? You know, it wasn't the plan, but uh, that's, that's just part of the learning experience. I was supposed to, you know, kind of slowly take my time and take them apart. But, um, you know, things change, and uh, I know my pops isn't going to be too happy about that. You know, we're going to work on that for the next not fight. happy. <laughs> well, because I came out too aggressive. I Switching. actually thought you showed a lot of patience. I think you kind of like took it in in the second round. You saw you gather yourself a little bit and uh, take yeah, your time. I, I try to, yeah. but um, you know I, I'm unhappy with it because I kind of rush things, and uh, it's just something I need to work on. Hey, that's that music background behind you, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're in the band. You got a big music background. You want to be the one. You want to be first chair, right? Right. right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly, exactly what you want to do right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to you work the scales good tonight, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Did okay. I did okay. All right. David Mihadis. He's now three and zero. Two KOs. There's that camera. Send your shout-outs, man. Man, thank you. Thank you to everyone who was able to watch. And thank you to my sponsors. Thank you, Golden Boy. And thank you to my management team, my whole team behind me. And thank you all for, for showing me the support. Santa Monica, Pasadena. He's awesome in California. David Mihadis gets our opening bout tonight with a second-round stoppage. We'll be back with more. We have four fights coming your way next on Ring TV Live. Cowboy Stadium, September 17th. The house that Jerry built. Well, Canelo's coming in, taking on Liam Smith. That'll be a great night of boxing in Dallas-Fort Worth area coming your way September 17th. The undercard was announced, and I think we have a graphic for you. But if we don't, it doesn't matter. Though. We don't need that graphic. <laughs> what we got is Joseph Diaz Jr., Doug. We have Diego De La Hoya and Holly Gabe Rosado on that car. Should I'm, be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that Rosado-Monroe Jr. fight, actually. A lot of fans of are. Technical boxers, neither one of them necessarily heavy hitters, but they've both shown kind of glimmers of really good boxing at times. And then, you know, they both had a couple of losses, too. So it'll be interesting to see who kind of bounces back and shows out a little bit there yeah, in Yeah, both guys have challenged for the world title. Both guys have fought uh, Triple G, Gennady right. Golovkin. Right. They lost by knockout. No shame there. And fans like them because 
they give 100% effort. And both guys were very gutsy against Triple G. The winner of this fight kind of gets back into title con uh, contention, so the stakes are very high for the veterans. I'm always interested if, if, if you know, if the stakes are you're back in title contention, like, do you want that fight again? You know? <laughs> well, yeah, it's <laughs> Like, uh, you know, you're back in the, in the running for a Triple G. Do you really want to take that again? But there's um, other guys, you know, absolutely. in the middleweight division, and these guys fit in very nicely. Um, the Joseph Diaz Jr. fight, Golden Boy was trying to make a WBC featherweight title elimination bout with Josh Warrington of the UK. Warrington wants to take a, another round. He's talking about a unification bout uh, in the UK. Um, Robert Diaz, the matchmaker of Golden Boy, literally went down the WBC's top 10. Couldn't get an opponent for Joseph Diaz Jr. Finally arrived at number 15 rated Andrew Cancio, who I think is a lot, he's more dangerous than some of those guys who are actually ranked in the top 10. This guy has come into his own and he's a very threatening boxer puncher. Fighters that we've seen on Ring TV Live and also at the Velasco Theater. The Velasco Theater, LA Fight Club, you get here, you put on a show, you win the crowd. As you said, a gladiator, you can elevate to a next level. We've seen that with Diego DeLoya, and now we're seeing it with Joseph Diaz Jr. And these fighters, Doug, especially with Diego De La Hoya, the fight that he has coming up, he's no longer, at, oh, that's Oscar's cousin. It's, oh, no, this kid can bang. We saw him in Las Vegas on the Co uh, Canelo undercard. That's right. He's taking off a ton of fighter also. Yeah, and he's, in, in my opinion, last year, he was the most improved prospect in boxing. At the start of the year, yeah, you know what? He was Oscar's cousin. Yeah. By the end of the year, no, he's a legitimate prospect, and that's how people look at him and on his own merits, and at least on paper, Del Valle is the most difficult opponent of his professional career because Del Valle, I believe, was an Olympian out of yep. Puerto Rico. He only has two losses to very good fighters. A fighter a lot of people say he was a prospect. He was. He was a, a has prospect. Has he developed? Yeah, and almost. Uh, Del Valle was almost a top ten contender himself. Lost to Victor Chinian, but he still has a very difficult style for young Diego De La Hoya to solve. And Holly Joseph Diaz Jr., the 2012 Olympian out of South Del Monte, undefeated. We've seen him on HBO. This will be his first pay-per-view fight. He should be exciting. Absolutely, he should be. I know he has a big crowd here in Southern California following him. I was really impressed with his um, his last fight on HBO Latino. So. Yes, it was. Yeah. Second thought, round I knockout. That, I thought that was a really good performance from him. Yeah, of a guy who had never been stopped before. He's, right. He's he kind of got he some mojo bang. in India. Whenever he fights at, at Fantasy Springs, he, he really makes a statement, and he generally does so with, with knockouts. With knockouts. I think going forward, that's really part of something that he's going to need as far as his marketing. I mean, he's got the personality. Obviously, he has the amateur background, being a 2012 uh, U.S. Olympian. He's got the boxing ability. The only thing he hasn't really shown in the highest stage, like when he fought Jason Velez uh, on HBO earlier this year, he didn't show that world-class power. If he can develop world-class power, he's the total package, and he's somebody that Golden Boy can not only advance to world title status, but you know, a crossover guy. September 17th, Cowboy Stadium. More than half the tickets have already been sold. Go to GoldenBoyPromotions.com, and there's a link there for you to buy the tickets. We'll be back with more from the Belasco Theater. You're watching Ring TV Live.